You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. Because you're on a main drag, pinged on APR, yeah. markers come up, violence, assaults police. No, so pack. anytime, anytime you get pulled over in a car, the cop is already like got half one there because he thinks there might be one coming back. Yeah. Like tell the truth what happened. You grabbed me, you bent me up, I didn't re resist. And you just saying I resisted, you're lying. Like this one the other day, they knocked me unconscious twice. I went from my house to the hospital for an MRI scan on my brain. Like, they knocked me unconscious two separate times by stamping on my head. If you can't get somebody banged up, but you can make them skin and make their lives an absolute misery, that's still a very useful tactic in terms of bringing somebody off their perch. Don't regret anything I've ever done in my life. Mm -hmm. Like, literally. If I regret what I've done, I ain't who I am. Do not waste I'm trying these not to greatest, know. greatest years of your life with those beautiful young children that I'm sure you adore having on your knee oh, and I'll kiss a good night and reading them a story and doing all of that and all the fun and laughs and parries and everything. Don't waste them no, by no. being behind the door. Went from burgling nicking cars to arm robberies to fuck anything and everything. And it was all met via prison. If you continue to antagonise, there will only be one winner and it won't be Danny Simpson. And let me tell you why I prevent it, right? And this is no old spot here, right, Dan? Okay? It's about half hour when I do it. Boom, we're on. And today's guest, we've got a belter for you. We've got a cop v robber. Everybody knows Danny Simpson. Zero fucks given mentality. Kind of man you love to hate. But as I've said before, I agree with absolutely nothing. Danny does just to put that out there, but I still love him to bits. We've also got Peter Blakesley. 20 years, over 20 years copper, undercover. Very high ranked and respected in the police force. First and foremost, guys, how are you? Do you want well, I'm very well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you, Dan. Nice to meet you too. How does it feel, Dan, to be sitting across from a copper? He's a famous one, so I don't... Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> have you seen some of Danny's stuff? I have, but I just want to make it clear, I don't have a warrant card, all right? <laughs> I, le I left the old bill a long, long time ago. So he fully agrees with what I do. So. <laughs> <laughs> he actually gets a percentage. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what to say? <laughs> well, I've, I've brought older with me. I don't know, you know, yeah. if you want to fill it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, no, no, of course not. But um, yeah, no, I, I did watch your previous podcast with mm -hmm. James. Um, in fact, we don't live a million miles away from one another. Really? Um, yeah, and I'm kind of surprised. Now I'm actually scared. Like, what the fuck yeah, is yeah. going on? <laughs> no, no. He knows where I live. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm surprised we haven't bumped into each other in blue water, perhaps. Oh, Not that I go there often. because That's I my favourite words to cop it. When they're beating yeah. me up on the floor, that's my, when you and your family in blue water, make sure you've got the same energy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Or Bexie East, for yeah. example, you know. All right, don't let everyone know. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, you did. You dropped oh, it on no, previous yeah. pods. Right, it's sweet. I don't care. But, you know, yeah. How would do, you, they'll do nothing yeah. all day. How would you deal with somebody like Danny back in the day? Well, if Danny came across my radar, it would have to be for serious and organised crime. Well, I am a serious criminal. Because <laughs> I know, yeah, I, I've, you know, I've done my own work. Because um, that's what most of my career was dedicated to. And it would all depend about the criminality that we thought he was involved in. And then we would set about a plan about how we were going to investigate it. And if he was committing such crime, then gathering the evidence, arresting him, getting him in front of court. And there's many, many different ways to skin a cat, some of which perhaps we'll talk about, and some by way of advice I would like to impart to you. Yeah. Yeah, just by way of sort of... I don't commit crime no more, though. No, 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 just by way of keeping you out of jail mm. rather than seeing you going into jail because everything you've said about your kids mm. and all of that, how important they are to you, you know... You ain't going to see him grow up if you'll be on the door for a long one. No, one hundred percent. So Danny's very anti-authority. Like, he's very at the forefront. That like, as a zero fucks mean given mentality. That's where I think a lot of people love it as well, as much as hate, because it's like a game of cat and mouse constantly with the coppers. That like, why do you think? Why are you so anti-authority? 
just just obviously my treat my treatment that happens with them does that make sense mm -hmm. like the way they come and treat me obviously that's then i'm like fuck you does it do you feel as if you antagonize them though yeah mm, yeah of course i do i wind them up but at the end of the day when there's you've just been battered by 30 of them what are you gonna do you can't go to the police station and stop doing rail moats and dal Gregans. so it's like I'll antagonise them through social media. Wind them up, put a picture of a steering wheel, do this, do that, knowing full well that uh, it's going to rile them up. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Can you build up a case through that? If he's taking pictures of steering wheels, or is that just a case that there's not enough evidence? Winding the police up would not be something that would have landed on my desk. You know, that's, not, he's way that's, up. Not, that's, <laughs> not, that's not serious <laughs> and organised crime. Yeah. You know, that's probably for the, for the local cops to have to deal with. But, on that note, there, there, there is a, a point here. And let me just speak in hypothet... Hyth I'll get that right in a minute. Hypothet... <laughs> fucking, can we do that again? Let me talk in hypothetical terms, if I may, okay? And, and this is based on, on truth, on what's happened in the past. If a criminal, and I'm not calling you an, an active criminal, mm. Dan. If an active criminal gets to a point where they are perceived as being a threat to the fabric of society. For example, they've got such a reputation, they've got so much wealth, and they're believed to have such power and influence over other people, then there comes a point when the cops will go, enough is enough. Correct. We simply have to take this person down. And I'll give you a true life example of that, if I may a name that might be familiar to you, Joey Pyle, right? He's no longer with us, Joey, and he's a, a, a bit before your guy's time, perhaps. There was a chief superintendent, detective chief superintendent that I worked for, who was utterly obsessed with Joey Pyle, with some justification. And he was determined to see Joey Pyle take a tumble, absolutely determined. And when I say take a tumble, I mean go to prison. Go to prison. Yeah. And he made a case to very, very senior ranking police officers that Joey Pilot had hit that level where he was a threat to the very fabric of society, like the Craze became mm. back in the day, like the Richardsons became back in the day. And, of course, what happened to all of them? Go they, they, they went to jail because you hit that level as a crook. And once the old bills say, right, too much power, too much influence, too much wealth, they've got to go, then the, the establishment will give the police all the resources that they need to ensure that that happens. And that's eventually what happened to Joey, albeit he got banged up, not for the crimes that we actually thought he was committing, but for, but for something else. But, mm. you know, that old phrase, if I can't get you for a sheep, I'll get you for a lamb. Could they possibly set Danny up if they can't get him for anything big? If he hit that bar, now not set him up as in fit him up, you know, those days, fortunately, are by and large done and dusted. You know, legislation has seen to that. No, they do actually still try it. Yeah, yeah, but not in the way that would have happened all those years ago oh, yeah, when, yeah, when, when we saw, like, down. you know, the Birmingham Four and the Guildford and, you know, all those kind of major, major kind of... Um, Setups. Yeah, essentially, yeah. Which, which were shown out eventually for, for what they were, where people have been fitted up. You know, you've got things like the Police and Criminal Evidence Act now and, and RIPA, the Regulation of, of yeah, Investigatory Powers Act and all of that, which are great things because they've, by and large, stopped people getting verbaled, you know, in an interview and, and, and that kind of stuff. Um, so, no, but if, if Danny hit a level where he actually was a threat to authority, yeah, then they would have to, they would have to do something about that. And I'll tell you how, if you want to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, first and foremost, they'd apply for um, to do covert surveillance on you, mm -hmm. right? And believe you me, the best surveillance teams, the specialist surveillance teams, you will not see them. Mm. And, of course, with modern surveillance techniques, there is so much that can be done technically now. Yeah, literally. For example, you know, we would plug up around the corner of your house and hack your Wi-Fi. Right? So now we're into your smart TV, we're into your Alexa. There's no need to get into your house when you go on holiday and plumb it up, you know, with cameras and video and, and audio like we used to in the old days. We're, we're just hack your tech. 
find out what car you're driving, hack the telematics. I know, yeah, yeah, I know that one. So we haven't got to lump your car up anymore. Well, like in the old ring days, ring the SOS, say where's the car? <laughs> yeah, in the old days, we used to have somebody have to crawl under the motor at three o'clock in the morning and literally put a magnetised tracker. Mm. Tucked car, away, uh, hidden away under the car. On one famous occasion, the geezer rumbled it, knew it, and posted it back to Scotland Yard, right? <laughs> in a jiffy bag, saying, I think this is yours. Oh. You know, but now, of course, if you can hack the telematics of your car, there's absolutely no need to do that kind of thing. And they can listen in. Yeah, exactly. Because through through that hacking, well, and it's true. the same with your smart telly, your Alexa, anything else mm. that you might have in your home. Um, but I actually watched that on it. your program. Right. And that's when I, I, I was like, fuck. Like everything, down mm -hmm. to baby monitors, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like with the cameras, or yeah, they can just get into everything. Like I was like, and they don't even have to go into your ass; they could do it all from outside on the computer. Mm -hmm. But like, that is not going to be done for you nothing. Know, a, yeah, a, a, a driving while a, a common or guard or criminal. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be done for for disqualified driving. But it will be done if a criminal reaches that level where they are a fundamental threat to authority, as I've previously mm -hmm. described. And of course, if the cops don't have the the expertise that they need. They are very close friends with the spooks. And believe you me, they do. Yeah. Did you have a lot of informants working back in the day? Yeah, Peter? of course. Bread and butter. So yeah. Stephen Danny's at the, just doing videos and saying, look, I've just ripped this guy off for 100 grand, 200 grand. Is there anything the coppers can do with that? Or is it just a case that that's down to him? Well, Danny and his suitcase of bricks and all that kind of stuff is <laughs> <he's> pretty much <laughs> crook v crook. But that took me back to my undercover days. Mm. Because, of course, you know, I was pretending to buy large parcels yeah. of gear, drugs predominantly, albeit I bought firearms and mm. lorry loads of stolen trainers and plotted to murder people and all that sort of stuff. But if I'm going in there looking to buy a large parcel that a criminal's offering me, you know, then, of course, I'm not going to take that suitcase. I'm going to have a proper nose in it yeah, because I don't want, you know, it's I don't want to be... Get, get mugged <laughs> off with snide gear or something that ain't gear. You Has know? an undercover copper ever been bumped let's say you came across dan and you made a deal and then before you thought you fuck say you fucked off you thought right i've got him here i bought a case you look in the bag and it's full of bricks yeah well, i did I, I i did towards the end of my undercover career when my mental health was failing because i was living in the witness protection program and i was still expected to work undercover and i was gradually bit by bit falling apart i went to manchester um to do a trade in at the heart of moss hill you know sitting down with utter lunatics and all of that Lined up to do a, a small trade for about three grand. It was a kilo of puff and an ounce of cocaine. Um, when we rocked up at this services, there was Mr. Nutty Bastard, who I'd met beforehand, with his pal. And they all made a point of letting me know they were carrying right, firearms. Mm -hmm. And everywhere I went, there was like spotter, spotter, spotter. You know, and I was right, kind of like, in the lion's den, so to speak. And I didn't check the parcel. I just took it because I just wanted to get the hell get out. out. I just wanted to get away. So I gave them the three grand, took the parcel. By the time I'd settled down a bit and we got 15 miles down the M6 and I checked it, it was a moody parcel. But, you know, if I'd fronted them out that day, if I'd gone, hang on, this is snide, you're trying to mug me off here, I pretty much doubt I would be sitting here telling you the tale. Yeah. So but you can still get Nick for that though, can't you? Well, yeah, you could have done, yeah, because it's, it's, it's as... making the offer. Yeah. Yeah, making the offer to supply and, mm. and all that supply, kind of stuff. Yeah, that's but but there's there's no point disclosing the undercover operation and for that for the, for the sake that's of it. And, and it's probably going to fall apart because yeah, cool, juries don't like uncomfortable, messy cases like that. Mm. You know, a jury wants, yeah, Strong. that's what you plan to do. That's how it went. It happened. Yeah, we've got the gear. We've got the people in the, in, in the, in the dock. It's a, it's a lot tidier yeah, and juries are going to be more likely to convict. How's things been, Danny? Obviously, the last two years, your name's kind of been everywhere. Your videos have been viewed millions of times. Like, you're still out there doing your thing. Like, is people still willing to do deals with you? Didn't you see the one that just went about recently? No. The geezer um, sent me uh, underground for watches. Like, literally. I posted like, this thing saying, watches half price. And he literally sent me £100,000 of Bitcoin. I was like, wow. Some idiot from Bournemouth, like, honestly, I posted it up. He's in the shower. He's like, I might have to send you my life savings, but hopefully I'll get the watches. I was like, you're not going to get no watches, bruv. So, yeah. So, what was that, a fake website? Yeah, just Instagram. Made an Instagram, said for everything, our price, and literally bumped one person in every bit of the country. 
How much did you make? Really? Well, he was under grand. And then obviously, there were Sir Runs, I was saying for five grand. I saw half price of that, two and two thousand five hundred pound. I probably sold 10 of them a day for about fucking a month. So, oh, I don't even know. It was me and another kid and probably, I probably walked away with like 300 grand. How do you feel when you hear stuff like that, Peter? It's In not, the wrong business? It's not a case of how I feel. It's a case of any old bill watching this, how they might feel. You know, They're in the wrong job. You know, and they're thumbing through the law books going, there's a crime there somewhere. There's a crime there somewhere. Get the lawyers. There's a crime here. You know, yeah. It kind of brings me back a little bit to what I was saying about if you become a, a threat to the establishment and mm -hmm. to authority. And I was talking about the surveillance team. Just rewind a little bit if I'm, you know, yeah. if, if I would. You know, I'd get them, as, as we would say, you know, to, to In be, up, be up your ass for a week, right, or a month, and have a look at your pattern of life, established pattern of life. Okay, so then the surveillance after a month doesn't actually see you going over the pavement, you know what I mean, with a belly on and a yeah. salt off, right? But it sees that you seem to have no legitimate way, or this fictional criminal, I should say, has no, has no, yeah, no legitimate means of, of income. So that whole pattern of life shows that lifestyle exceeds income. Mm. Right? So they go, right, should we do it for another month or not? And, and, and whatever the decision may be. What the cops would do if they could not establish any sufficient evidence, and there's many other ways that they might try and do that. Of course, you know what they might do? Go and see their friends at His Majesty's Revenue and Customs. In other words, the tax man or the tax woman or the tax person, you know what I mean, right? Go to the tax authorities and go, right, get on him. Get all over him like a rash. What tax does he pay? And, of course, that's a tactic as old as the hills because it brought down Al Capone. Yeah. But it's still a very powerful weapon. If you can't get somebody banged up but you can make them skint, and make their lives an absolute misery, that's still a very useful tactic in terms of bringing somebody off their perch. What would you do if you got a big tax bill? No, I went and bought a really good company with all the bad money. I went and bought a really good company and now I pay taxes. Like I could have a job today for 30,000 pounds. I could put the, I could say, pay me in cash. They pay me in cash and I could put the other money through the bank. There's nothing. I've got a tax rebate now for like six, 56 grand. So if he's getting tax rebates, if he's buying and selling motors, then there's nothing up with that either. No, and no, how can they... as long as he's legit and, and terrific, you know what I mean? We want people paying taxes, <laughs> you know what I mean? Roads, hospitals, armies, schools, all of that has to be paid for. Absolutely. So if you're legit and you're selling lots of bagels and you're letting lots of properties and all of those are all legit and you're paying your tax and you've got a proper straight accountant that's looking after all your financial affairs for you so that the tax man can't find a flaw in what you're doing, what's not to like? Literally. So if Danny's antagonising police and stuff, but it doesn't give the police right to beat anybody up, like, do, you, do you agree with that? Of no course. No matter what they've done. Of course. Of course. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, 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 I'm firmly uh, against violence. There are, of course, times when the police have to use physical force, you know, when it's justified and when it's mm. necessary and when it's proportionate and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes, of course, they have to use the ultimate force, which is squeezing that trigger and killing someone. You know, Dan, back in his Robin days, if you, if you go even further back to the sort of 80s, the mid 80s, in the Met particularly, the flying squad were very good at capturing people on the pavement, actually Doing committing that crime, and consequently, quite a number of armed robbers got shot dead. Yeah, my mate did. He um, done an armed robbery in Eltham, and as they come out, he was the driver around the corner, and as the, obviously the robbers come out, the police was just as McDonald's workers and bus drivers. They've swamped on the robbers outside there, but obviously they knew the car was around the corner. They've gone around there, stop, stop, stop. My mate's literally looked up and shot him straight in his face, but she went through his uh, jaw and went literally out his mouth. Do you ever worry that could happen to you? When I used to do armor robberies, yeah, 100%. I honestly thought, I always said I'll never live past my 30s, but obviously when my brother got 12 years in prison in 2013, as I said, that's when I turned, and the Trident officer said to me at court, and I remember it clear as day, it was Maystone Crown Court, and he looked at me and he went, you're next. 
And I walked out the court and I said, I'll never, ever, ever do an arm robbery again. I actually have never done a robbery ever, like government, like banks, post offices, whatever. Mm. Never done one again, never touched one. Obviously, the police force back in the day it was ruthless. Nowadays, you've got the coppers dancing and kind of making a show of themselves. Like, what do you think about that sort of stuff? Oh, I'm firmly against police officers dancing on duty, like I'm firmly against them painting their cars in dainty colours and holding flags of whatever minority group or nation it might be. I don't think that's got any place in policing and I've been very vocal on social media about that and I've attracted a fair amount of hey. criticism <laughs> as, a, as a result of that, but it's not altered my standpoint one little bit and, and, and never will. Just to rewind a little bit, if I may, back to the, the mm. whole robbery and particularly in the 80s when as I say, a number of armed robbers were getting shot dead. That coincided with so many, because armed robbers used to be the highest echelon, echelon of criminality in the 70s and the 80s. They were the people that were respected by the old bill, you know, but who were ever more determined to take them down. Mm -hmm. You know, capturing a team of robbers on the pavement on was, job was, was seen by, like, you know, was proper, proper bit of graft. Um, but of course, in those days, we were just seeing the influx of so many drugs coming into the country, particularly the cocaine explosion of the sort of mid-1980s. And so many people would do a blag, you know, do a robbery, get themselves a joey full of scratch, a bag full of money, and they go, well, are we going to risk going on the pavement again and potentially getting shot? No, what we'll do is we'll invest that in a whole load of gear. And, of course, that is really when so many armed robbers morphed from robbery into, into drug dealing. How are you dealing with it all you now? Like that social media attention and obviously it's like I say, he's not a bad guy. You even sitting here, but you can like, he's a good guy. I've always says it, but obviously I don't agree with a lot of shit he does. But he's got a good heart, man, and I would never need him for anything. But I believe if I was to phone Danny, he'd be there with no questions asked. Like, how do you deal with like the social media presence? And because then. Like you say, so if you've got over 100,000 followers, if you've got videos viewed millions of times, you become a likeable character as well, no matter if it's negative or positive. But how do you then deal with that? Because I know we've spoken about mental health the first two podcasts, but you seem quite calm today. But how are you dealing with the kind of social media side of things? Well, I get deleted every week, so I have to build it back up. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I just obviously hate it. People just report, report, report. In six months, I think I'm on my fifth Instagram. Like, it's just... Instagram and lizards like what can I say like can police shut his accounts down I have frankly no idea about that to be honest with before you. he's but time that, that, <laughs> yeah yeah just a little bit yeah but it's kind of you know that sparks that whole debate isn't it about whether the police should be policing social media no they do because I've been saying um, so basically I had a court case the other month and they was all they was going on about is my social media I'm having mad drama now with social services because of all of this and the police have just, all they're going on about is my social media. Like, I went on to do my kids, my little girl Paris the other day for her birthday. So services meeting today. All they're talking about is I was in Paris with my kids. That police have sent these pictures of me with my kids. So they're just stalkers, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. just... Do you regret some of the videos you've done in the past? I don't regret anything I've ever done in my life. Mm -hmm. Like, literally. If I regret what I've done, I ain't who I am. So, no. So, see, obviously, Danny's been out of prison children's homes your children's homes no no no, no. Just prisons. Know, prisons for a young age yeah, literally 15 um, can you under, do you see the patterns when you're working in the police force that understanding like the kids coming from broken homes and then going to prison for a very young age and then becoming who they are as adults of course uh, there are many people with challenges in adult life and also those involved in crime that have had what they call adverse childhood experiences you know, Dan getting his feet broken by his dad with a pull cue is very much an adverse childhood experience and you are going to come out affected by that. No, no matter what, of course it's going to affect you. My father was particularly vicious and unpleasant and nasty and that had an enormous influence on me for many, many years. Um, I eventually got over it, you know, he left home. I met up again with him 20-odd years later got the answers to the questions that have been gnawing away inside of me. I was fortunate enough that as a, as a puppy, basically, as a 17-year-old, you know, I went into the police cadets. So that kind of thrashed the ill discipline, the anti-establishment kind of attitude, because I'd been a nightmare at school and all of that. 
and and that thrashed that out of me and quite possibly saved me from going down a very different career path. Mm -hmm. But now, as I get older, even though our career paths have, have, have been at the opposite ends of, of the scale, you know, and I'm I'm now unashamedly going to sound like an old uncle here because here I am, right? In my He's actually my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he gets away with his three points. <laughs> now, look, 30 odd years ago, I wasn't married, all right, but I'm willing to do a DNA test to prove that I'm not his uncle, right? Okay. But, you know, we, he, you know, I, I feel like I should have a cardigan here and a mince pie in front of me. It should be Christmas Day. I'm, you know, amongst a couple of young gentlemen in their thirties. You know, and 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 I should be dispensing life advice or not, maybe. <laughs> but here we go. You know, you have so much going for you. You're personable. You're sparky. You've got a sense of humour. You love your kids and all of that. When I was about forty years old, I went out for a drink one night. Got drunk, woke up, and do you know what? Before I knew it, I was 60. Because time goes like that. Literally. You're looking at me thinking, look at that frigging overweight old wrinkly geezer. You no, know I actually I mean? agree with you because I remember the... I was in Belmarsh and I was in the gym and I was doing deadlifts and I was literally just ripping them up, ripping them up. And the gym gov said to me, he went, you want to be careful because the second you get one day over 25, it's all going to go too quick. You're going to get injuries. You're going to get this. I was like, yeah, whatever, mate. What happened? One day over 25, broke my leg. A couple of weeks later, I broke my hands. Then boom, I'm 33. Yeah. I'm like, fuck. I remember yesterday being in that gym and the geezer saying to me, one, when you get over 25, you won't be doing that. And You'll be 50 and 60 yeah, and a granddad before you know literally. where you are. Yeah. Do not waste I'm trying these not to greatest, know. greatest <laughs> years of your life with those beautiful young children that I'm sure you adore having on your knee and oh, kiss a good night and reading them a story mm. and doing all of that and all the fun and laughs and parries and everything, don't waste them no, by no. being behind the door because you can't get to see them. That's what, like with my little boy, he's like 10 now and I've literally probably for about five years probably missed by being in jail. And like now, like going to true secondary schools, I'm like, this is going a bit quick. Like, I remember when he was a baby, now we're choosing secondary schools. Mm -hmm. What happens after secondary school? You'll either go down one road or one road. So it's like, fuck, it's going so quick. Do you worry for your kids that because of your social media presence and videos that are out there that they potentially f go down the same road as yourself, even though you're trying to prevent it? Uh, my little boy, nah, he's so polite. Like, when he was younger, he used to be a menace. Like, honestly, he was... He was just so naughty. I was just like, wow, he's going to be like me or worse. But now he's just, he would be coming here, be like, hello, shake your hand, polite, respectful. But now I'm like, look at my little girl that I've got, Delilah. And I'm just like, you're going to be worse than me. <laughs> Shit, I'm in trouble. Mm -hmm. And where she's only like 18 months, I'm 32. So when she gets to say, I'm going to be an old fart, do you know what I mean? And I'm all for like my daughters are not having a boyfriend, but these little youngsters when I'm fucking 60 they're probably going to beat the shit out of me so yeah trust me they will but <laughs> but, but, but they will have that'll do friends, nothing right <laughs> sorry the old fart's got the mic again right yeah um, yeah they, they will of course have girlfriends but you know what the better you raise them dare I say it I think the likelihood of them bringing home a nice fella mm. is increased substantially yeah and, and at the end of the day but then again in this world now that we live in is there nice obviously girls is they're nice boys I, yes. I feel like it's just social media and cams girls and it, it's just showing them all the wrong stuff of them like my nan and granddad was together from the age of 15 to when my nan died last two months ago so that it seems like it doesn't happen no more there are many many wonderful young people out there my two youngest are mm. only 20 and 21 right and they're both at uni and of course, any chance I get to go up the uni and go out and make myself an enormous embarrassment to my kids, <laughs> I will. You know, we go nightclubbing, we go out having a drink, and and I love just being surrounded by these bright, articulate, lovely people. There are millions of them out there, you know. You know, and and they don't have to. These kids don't have to live their lives on social media. You're their dad. Mm. You can you can limit it, ration it, you don't know, sack it. No, I, dead, I just try and let them do what they want. Like, I always believe on they will make the right choice. 
And I proved to my baby mum before. She's like, you can't just let the kids do whatever they want. That's just not on. They're going to grow up and be brats. And I turned to my little boy. I went, do you want to go to school today? And he turned around and went, yeah. I went, there you go. Let them make the decision and they'll make the right decision. If they try and go the wrong decision, you just lead them back into the right decision. But I always believe, let them make the decision. And it's worked. Do you know what I mean? I've got good baby mums who are polite, respectful, and don't have anything to do with my side of life. And they literally bring the kids up perfectly. So I well, actually don't have no worries in that. Well, long may that continue because, you know, parenting is the most important job literally. in the world. See, with your past and stuff and the stuff that you're, you say that you do, does it, do you ever worry that it could come back and affect your kids or their baby mums? What, like someone uh, uh, retaliating? retaliating to them? Yeah. No, because I'll do the madness. Mm -hmm. Like, literally. When does it ever stop then, Danny? When does what what I do? Yeah, I actually don't do anything no more. Obviously, I've done that thing the other day, but apart from that, I don't. Unless if someone's going to put it on the plate, then they're going to put it on the plate. But yeah, I don't. I don't go out looking for it intentionally. I don't go out now looking to, as you would say, rob someone. Do you know what I mean? I got my businesses. I'm kicking back, being a family man. Paying tax. Paying tax. Yeah. <laughs> do you think guys like Danny can change, Peter? If you, if you are kind of seen over the years working with certain criminals and people making changes, does it, does it happen? The biggest transformations I've seen amongst people who have chosen a life of crime is when they've had a, a long sentence. Um, say, for example, they've had a 20 rat round them and they've done 10 or 11, because then the prison authorities have been able to do some real work on them and they have had so long banged up that they've appreciated that they don't want to come out and go straight back in for another long one. So I don't think that short sentences, generally speaking, I think are just a waste of time. Yeah, but you say um, that. I've done, I've been in prison since basically 2005 to basically 2018. Like, I know you say short sentences and whatnot, but I also got a five and I've got a two. And a, so I literally from 2005 to then, prisons don't actually do anything. No, unless, of course, you've got a 20, right? And then you go to them dispersal different. jails. Absolutely. I get, I get that. And then, of course, some of the, the services that are available, the courses and the learning and mm. the work that the prisoners can do on themselves, yeah. you know, that real deep-seated look yourself in the mirror, proper learning. You know, I've experienced the people and I've met people that have done that and they've come out. They've also got a trade while they've been banged up, yeah. which has been another beneficial side, if, uh, side effect of, of doing a long sentence. And they come out... And they're qualified yeah. and they can set themselves up and they go straight into a legitimate business and they have absolutely no reason whatsoever to go anywhere near criminality ever again. And fair play to them. Those people have my utmost respect because I all believe we should have a second chance. What well, does, some, not yeah. certain people don't deserve a second chance, but overwhelmingly people do. What does it take for a criminal to, to really make the changes? Like you say, the big sentences. And, but and I feel like inward. prison makes, turns you into a criminal. So I went to prison what, one day, like, Literally, me and my mate was walking back. And we see a window open. So we just, we was only young. We thought, oh, let's just nick the car. We've gone in. We actually didn't take anything from the ass. But they reported it to the police that they'd been burgled. I went to prison for four, four months to two in 2005. When I got out from that four months to two, I met this scumbag, that scumbag, that scumbag, that scumbag. All of a sudden, I'm flat out now doing burglaries, nicking cars, doing this and that. All of a sudden, got back to prison. Met this scumbag, that scumbag, that scumbag boom, out again with all these other new scumbags doing different crimes. And that was just a spiral. Went from burgling nicking cars to arm robberies to fuck anything and everything. And it was all met via prison. It goes back to what I was just saying, Dan, short sentences. Literally. Essentially, really, they're, 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 they're a waste of time. It's just a youth They, 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 like, they honestly, don't serve any, any purpose. useful just, purpose. They just turn you into, an, into yeah. a better criminal. Yeah. That's the all long they sentences... Do where people can work on themselves and the authorities can work on the prisoners, yes, they very often do mm. work. What do you think should change then the prison system to help offenders? Um, to not re-offend, basically? Because the percentage is very high of people going back in. Yeah, I think it starts at school on that. I don't think so. Because, obviously, I know I'm rabbiting on that, but the way I got out of crime, like you said, like you do courses and that, then, then people change. But when I changed is when... Um, I realised I bought these companies and I realised how much money you can make legitimately mm. and obviously when all this started going on I was making in the summer £10,000 a week from from a construction business I never made that doing one robbery one armed robbery running in someone with a gun I never made that 
what are our, we're in cash boxes and that, 20 grand, 25 grand. There's four of us. So we never got the 20 grand. We got like fucking seven grand each or something. Do you know what I mean? Now I'm sending boys to work and I'm earning 10,000 pound a week. So I feel like that's what mentally changed me, that I can make more money legitimately than not, than criminal crime, do you know what I mean? I've, you... had, I've had just about every type of pound note mm. in my pocket over the years, right? I've had the pound note that I've won off the bookies. I've had the pound note that somebody's given me. You know what I mean? A mm. gift when you're a kid, your birthday yeah. money and all that kind of stuff. I might have had a pound note that might have come from a questionable source given to me. And I've also had the pound note that I've grafted for. And I've got to tell you, the best pound note in your pocket and the anyway. most enjoyable pound note to spend is the one that you've grafted for. 100%. Bar none. 100%. Do you feel as if you enjoy it more if it's legit? Yeah, I, I actually love it. Like, honestly, I know I put up Range Rovers, this, fucking all these cars and things. But the most satisfaction I've ever had was I'd done a driveway for an OAP who was a train driver his whole life. And it was just for the Queen's Jubilee, but just before she died. And he wanted his driveway done. And I got up to help him because he really loved me. At six o'clock in the morning and on my hands and knees, myself and ladies drive. And that was the mo when I walked away and see his face, it was the most satisfaction I've ever had. I've barred my kids, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That to know that I actually made him and his wife really happy. And I've done it myself. Not all the driving around in Range Rover. I went to work in the van, in work clothes and done that myself with obviously my main boy. What was the main object? What was the main thing for you to try and make changes? What came into your mind? What was the thing that says, fuck me, I need to make changes? My kids. Like, literally my kids. I just thought I can't be... In my life in soul, I breathe my kids. My kids are my everything. I couldn't be away from them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if I go and commit a crime there and, what, get three grand, and what, and I'm going to lose my kids for two and a half years and then be back to square one? No. Do you know what I mean? How hard is it then to then make the adjustments, Danny, from being the boy he's kind of out there in your face and zero fucks given to then try to be like maturing and try to see the world a bit differently? And you've always been a family man. I've always said mm. this every podcast that like, that's why I've got major respect. That like, even though the things that you've done was wrong, but you're still trying to provide for a family. But now you're just seeing the world a little differently. That like, how hard is that then to make that transition where people then maybe test you more if they see like a softer side? What do you mean? Like if you're, you're not out there, fuck the police and I'm going to fuck this person. Oh, I still am person. like that. Yeah. But obviously, I just, it's separate. But you seem different. Do you reckon? Yeah. What, you seem up? more chilled. Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Because obviously the mental side of things that like you were both different ends of the spectrum. Police officer, criminal, you struggled with your mental health, you struggled with your mental health. Like, when did yours start slipping, Peter? When I was living living in the witness protection program that would with, the, with, the, with the constant threat of an assassin's bullet in the, bullet in the back of my head and I was still having to go to work and I was still working undercover. So in any given day, I could be three different people because I get up in the morning, there's a mail on the doormat. Oh yeah, there's a reminder, I'm living in this house, not a house, it was a hideout. I'm living in this hideout in one identity. I jump in a car, drive to work, put the radio on. Hooray! I could be Peter Blexley for an hour, get to work, and the governor says, we've got an undercover job, Blex. Off you go. Right? So by about half 11 in the morning, I've been three different people. And oh, I was God. drinking too much, and I was smoking too much. And the constant threat and concern and conspiracy theorising and all that, of course, led to a catastrophic mental health breakdown. Did you ever feel used? Any police? Mm, I don't think I particularly looked at it. In that fashion, I felt that there were certain things that shouldn't have been done that were done and the situation whereby the confidential report with my name in it should never have been compiled, never had my name put in it, never take printed off, taken out of police premises, never left in a car where it could be stolen, etc., etc., etc. Yeah, I was pretty, pretty pissed off about all of that. But, um, you know, it was all a long time ago. Yes, at the time I was hurt. It was really the motivation for writing my autobiography all those years ago um because that was very cathartic to get that off my chest and get it out there because i felt i'd been wronged um but you know fortunately i live my life now looking forwards and not backwards and um it's all part of a dim and distant memory what about your own mental health danny we've spoke about it a few times but when was it at your darkest like you've been in prison you've been out of prison you've had the money you've had the big cars like 
It's never, we never seem satisfied. We never seem good enough. Like, when the jurors become at its, its worst. worst. Yeah. Right now. Why? Just the fact of, like, just the way life is, the way the police are being with social media, um, the police are being with um, social services at the moment. I feel like they're just attacking my kids and I'm helpless to it, if that makes sense. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's nothing I can do. And it's, I'm powerless, like, yeah. That- well, but let's look at the things that you do have mm. some power over, okay? Because there are things, of course, we can't alter in life, but there are many things that we can actually take responsibility for and, and, and change. For me, life is about making as much of it as easy as we can, mm. right? So, you know, if you can not get in the tear-ups with the old bill, not engage with the old bill, not have a reason to get, engage with the old bill, that would be a massive benefit, I think, to you. Yeah, but I don't. Like, uh, to the point of the other day was going to work. I mean, a company ran, sign written up, company closed. They swamped on me in a petrol garage. Everyone knows BP petrol garages, Metropolitan Police has got to deal with them. That's the petrol garages they use. So I've gone in this petrol garage. They've swamped on me four car loads to search me for a weapon. Now, it's irrelevant what I've got on me. I could have an axe, a knife, whatever. I'm in a company car that does construction work. Unless I've got a gun, there's nothing you can do. Do you know what I mean? But they've got me handcuffed over the bonnet, doing the madness. And I'm like, you're doing this. Now, anyone in this petrol garage that sees this company, they're never going to use it. So then what happens to me when my company's not being used and I'm not making money? I go back to crime. So what are you doing? What was the outcome of that? They searched me, let's kept me there for 45 minutes and let me go. Right. Well, well played. Okay. First of all, mm. huge, huge credit to you mm. for not having a rare up and a tear up Literally. and getting yourself <laughs> nicked. Right. That is such a positive. Mm. Now take that as a positive. You have displayed a maturity there that you wouldn't have had five years ago. This is what keeps on happening to me. Right. Right. Okay. So eventually, mm. eventually, if you can show that that incredible self-restraint that you did, mm. okay, those things are going to go away eventually. <laughs> they are going to go mm. away. They really tried it the other day. Like, I got, I was with my baby mum. Well, she had to get the baby's job. So she said, oh, look, because there's two kids, can you come with me? Well, I'll take one baby in and then you look after the baby in the car. Said, no problem. I've seen all these police cars. So I said, oh, give me a lift out of here, like to my brother's ass. She went, oh, it's went no problem. As we drove out, whoom, police car straight in front. Like, literally, vroom. Jumped out. I've got out. I'm like, what? Oh, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, no, I ain't telling you. I ain't telling you. I'm like, well, you've got to tell me. Why are you pulling the car over? Stay there. Stay there. I went, I ain't doing nothing, mate. Shut the fuck up. And then he's, he went, do you know what? Boom, and he's tried to grab me. Now he wants a fight. Like, old Danny from 15, 25 would have picked him up and threw him. What did I do? Jog back. Start video and you do nothing. Jogged off. Down the road. Right. Got pulled over down the road by fucking 20 police. Why are you running? Why am I running? It's because I don't punch his head in. Very simple. It goes one way or another. I just jog over here and get away from him, or he puts his hands on me. My mental brain can't deal with someone putting their hands on me. I end up just smashing his head in. Then he's in prison for assaulting a police officer. Because any touch I've done, a touch, a push, a punch, an head butt, a bite, is always assaulting a police officer. And it's one way ticket to prison self-restraint mm. you know you've shown it in the bp garage mm. right jumping straight up and telling them to f off and all that ain't great right that restraint that be a, being able to count to 10 i know but or 20 can't. no you know and all of that you know you, you, you're gonna have to i'll be trying because that's you, why i'm not in prison you're really really well well then you must have been trying successfully yeah. on occasions because you're here and not banged up. 100%. Do you so, know what? I've just learned so, just not, not fight back. Not fight back. Right. Be cocky. Be thick. Just don't fight back. When he's doing all the grabbing and trying to, you know what police do when they try and give you a little twist and all that for you then to buy it and then he jumps on you. I don't buy it now. I just turn around and go, what are you doing, mate? Do you know what I mean? I'll be cocky, cocky, cocky. And then when they start doing it, what are you doing, mate? Like, go on and do it. Just let him. Yeah, stand back. So then I let can't, them search I can't, the van. Let I can't them, go. Let them search the car. 100%. Them, and, and like they, they had battered me the other day. I've got a picture on my phone. 
He came into my house to arrest me for a blackmail. I think this was last month, September. They come in my house to arrest me for a blackmail. And now uh, when they come into my house, um, they literally, when I'm no joke, when I tell you, they kicked the shit out of me. To the point, they broke my ribs. They broke my hand. They had a hole in my head. I had a black eye. And it's crazy. To the point of today on social services meeting, social services asked them for the CCTV, the body worn cameras. Yep. They went, we can't give you that because of the assault that happened with Mr. Simpson. And I was like, what? And then they went, oh, look, Mr. Simpson got assaulted. But obviously he was resisting arrest. Like, that's all they ever try and fall back on. Like, do you want me to show the pictures of it? No, well, you can show me those afterwards, Bav. But what was the outcome of that search? Nothing. There you go, see? So that's another bonus. Now we've got the BP garage mm. and we've got that search of your house, right? No charges. Literally, yeah? not you're, one. You're, you're not... You're not I was in this police up. station here, Fulham. Yeah. And the, um, the custody sergeant, when I was bailing me, went, how dare you, how dare you release him on bail to the, to the man who interviewed me? He's like, I've been told by my boss to like bail him. And then he went, um, D no, not DST. Um, what's the ta the ones driving the blue buses, tactical ones? TSG. TSG they're not, I'm going to ring TSG now. They're not going to be fucking happy. Look what they've done to him. And now you're releasing him within 12 hours. That was his exact words in the custody suite. And my citizen went, don't say anything. It's all recorded. That helped us in court. So of when course. can he do people so, for harassment? So you've got, no, I am. I've got a barrister, literally a very good, expensive barrister. Mm -hmm. And I've spoken to him today and we're going through all the evidence. I'm doing the police for harassment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, obviously I won't comment about <laughs> an, ongoing, an ongoing, you know, potential criminal discipline case. Mm -hmm. That would be irresponsible broadcasting. But let's just focus on those two examples yeah. that we've spoken about. BP and the other one. They didn't lead to any charges. Any charges yeah. Right? Okay. No court cases. Mm. You have shown a certain level of restraint. Yeah, of Not as much perhaps as I'd like you to do, but okay, it's a work in progress. So when yeah, you say yeah. your mental health's not great, think about those positive experiences. Mm. Not positive experience, but your positive reaction. In that, you didn't rear up, you've not been nicked or charged. Well, okay. Listen and take things like that. So it comes back to what I was talking about, about the things you can control in your life, mm -hmm. right? You can choose not to commit crime, big tick. You can choose to act with restraint when you engage with the police, and therefore prison won't be Random. on the horizon <laughs> yeah, in any way, shape, or form, will it? Nope. And therefore, that looks better with social services. You see more of your kids. You engage with them better. I, no, and, I don't actually yeah. engage with them. I don't have no involvement. I feel like they're all liars and they just chat shit. I have no involvement. If they ring my phone, I say, don't dare ring my phone. Hang up. Because they lie. They tell one person one thing, they tell another person another thing, they tell another person another thing. They didn't even know the other day that I had four kids. So how can I even listen to them? They're ringing my phone. It's in this meeting and all that. Kids in danger, blah, blah, social media, present lifestyle. I'm like, yeah, great. But you're talking to this baby mum. They went, yeah. I went, but them kids are five months old and 18 months old. They're, they're with the baby mum 24-7. Why are you not talking to the other baby mum whose kid's 10 and the other kid's four? He's got social media, the 10-year-old. He goes walks to school on his own, back from school on his own. He's more in danger than anyone. Why are you not talking to that one? Oh, who's that one? I went, so you only know about them two kids? Yeah. So you didn't know I had another two kids? No. I went, get the fuck off my phone, man. So what's happening with the social... The Social services. I have no involvement with them at all. They will not tell me. They will not dictate to me. I will, unless they got in black and white from a judge saying, I'm um, this, that, that, that. I won't even acknowledge them. See, and they can't. See, because of Danny's past, is that a big, lots of red flags for her? Because the man is always fucked anyway when it comes to kids and divorces. It's always the man who gets the the bad fucking edge of the stick. Like, how does Danny then improve that to try and get the kids back, to try and then stop with the police harassment like he's not angel or saint but how does they then put the steps into becoming well i'm absolutely delighted to say i've never been divorced <laughs> and i've never had any dealings <laughs> with the social services <laughs> over my kids and uh, i'm very happy about that but you know i can just in that whole bloody nagging uncle kind of way sticking within the the spheres of operations that i do know about in other words crime and policing you know, just urge Danny to not commit crime, don't rear up, and then things will settle down. I'm not saying it's going to happen overnight, no, and then course. you will feel better. And you know, 
you can treat yourself to a pipe and a pair of slippers, you know what I mean? And look forward to the time just... when you have a, a, a grandchild on your knee. And, Luckily, and, girls and, ain't having a kid. And, 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 you'll be, and you'll be the old man who needs his driveway done. Yeah, it will happen like that, Dan. The older you get, the quicker time flies. Yeah, definitely. And you don't want to waste it. But do you know what it is, though? It's like, it could be five years, and all of a sudden someone will make a fake video and post a fake video, <clears> and it'll be like, so shows is back. My kid's 10. They've been coming in and out of my life every year over something. It could be anything. Assaulting a police officer, so services are back. Anything. It's actually ridiculous. Like, And I've just give up now. Honestly, I'm just like, oh, do you know what? I don't even care. Don't ring my phone. What's the worst beating you've had off the coppers? It's about half hour when I do him. Make chance of that. He'd do nothing. <laughs> um, My street fighting days are long behind me, Dan. Right? I promise. Please, please. Probably, um, probably Betsy Police Station one. That was a bit, a bit bad. Like, I was on the phone, and then they was like, I could hear Sergeant saying, "Get him off the phone now," but I just carried on having a conversation, and then the police officer come over and he was like, "Look, you've got to kiss phone," and I just turned around like that. And the sergeant shouted. So I just said, all right, I'm, I'm going. I got off the phone, walked straight up to the desk. And I tried to grab the sergeant. And as I tried to grab the sergeant, he was wearing them tyres. But on them tyres are just clip-ons. It's clipped off. Oh, my days, did they get me in that cell and kick the shit out of me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that was probably... That and the one the other day... No, the one the other day weren't actually that bad. But the Bex Eve one was probably the worst. Bex Eve and Plumpsy Police Station. That do one, they done me as well. Do you worry that it'll never stop? No, because they want a retaliation. They want me to throw one punch back. They want me to do an headbutt. They, because that's the charge. That's the prison. Do you know what I mean? But obviously, I just don't give it to them. Like, Plumsy Police Station one was quite funny. When they piss me off, I call for water. When they come for water, I just put my arms out the, the hatch. I just don't move my arms. Then they literally, the whole police station comes to a standstill. We get his fucking arm, geezer's arms back in that thing. And then, yeah, they come in that time, kick the shit out of me. Do you think you're biting your tongue now with not retaliating because your kids are in the lane? Yeah, I'll never, I'll, never, I'll never react in front of my kids. Like, literally, if they come, then I'll just, like, well, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Go with them. But I never really, I don't actually kick off no more with them. It's them, do you know what I mean? Like, this one the other day, they knocked me unconscious twice. I went from my house to the hospital for an MRI scan of my brain. Like, they knocked me unconscious two separate times by stamping on my head. And how bad is it to go from your house to hospital for an MRI scan. That's a, and they say use, using reasonable force. What reasonable force is you've got to go and have an MRI scan. MRI scan is not something they take lightly. You go to hospital for them to say he needs an MRI scan, <laughs> I must have been fucked up. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. How far can police go, Peter, if somebody's resisting arrest? They're, they're permitted to use whatever force is proportionate, reasonable. Um, and that, of course, varies on circumstances, doesn't it? You know, if 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 somebody is having a proper tear up with you, then you've got to use whatever reasonable force to detain that person if you've got evidence to arrest them. Or but at the end of the day, we can't, we can't to use that though. So why are they? Because no. at the end of the day, they're still. I read something before, and they, it, was, it was Dan. This judge said it, and I read it in the paper. And basically, what happened? This police officer was chasing this moped, and the moped was driving dangerously. He ended up crashing, dying. The police officer was getting in trouble because he was doing the same. And the judge went, regardless of anything, the law is the law. Nobody is above the law. And the law is, if I touch you and it's an assault, it's an assault, no? Regardless if it's self-defense or what. Because if me and him was out on that street now and he punched me in my head and I punched him straight back in his head, we're both getting nicked for a fray. So why, if the police officer does it, it's self-defense or I was using a reasonable force. It's not. Yep. It should be the same. It's the law. It's the law. Yeah, but no two cases are the same. Mm. Okay, so it's 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 reasonable force. That's that's the real buzzword. Reasonable force, and that reasonable force needs to be proportionate. For example, yeah. if I'm, you know, I'm I'm in plain clothes, right? I'm carrying a gun like I used to on many occasions, and I'm plotted up outside a bank or a post office, and a robber comes out and he's carrying a sawn off. Then there's pretty. <laughs> Not a lot. That's of a dispute. different level. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. There's not a lot of dispute 
about me being reasonable mm. if I squeeze that trigger, well, give him a power, you, yeah. and, and that person loses their yeah, life, for yeah. example. Although, of course, many similar cases like that have been debated, discussed, and, and fought over in various courts of law. That's mm. where the law is so often interpreted and decided. Mm -hmm. If you go to something completely, a, a completely different level, if I'm a police officer and I'm looking to arrest someone and they go, you're not laying your hands on me, copper, and they pull their arm away, then clearly I'm going to have to do something other than just reaching out and putting the hand on them. Mm. See, if I did that, just reach out, put the hand on, and they went, no, you're not doing mm. that, well, then I'm going to have to up the ante, aren't I? I'm going to have to use greater force than yeah. I originally intended, intended to, to do. do. Um, but, but a punch in the face... Uh a punch in the ribs, uh, hit him with a cosh, hit him with uh, a walkie-talkie. It's not acceptable as as anybody to hit another human being. So why have the Metropolitan Police got this right? Because when I've been arrested by Kent, I don't have these problems. When I got transferred from Fulham Police Station to Kent Police Station, the sergeant said, I've been in this job 25 years. I've never, ever seen anybody come in with them injuries in my, in my whole working life. Who done that? And I was like, the police. He was like, you sue them, you're getting out of court payment, 100%. It, but it's not right. What, then now go and do it to the person who can't sit here and talk. Is there an that. ongoing court case about that? No, 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 no. Right. Well, not yet. Right. Well, there might be. So I'm not going to comment on it, right? <laughs> of course he's not. Because it, because it's, no, no, no. But not, and I will, I would never defend the indefensible, yeah, yeah, right? You know, and when we were cops. Let's just you know, say, for we, example. We, let me just, just, mm. just finish one moment, if I may, please, okay. Dan, right? Punchy police are a liability, mm. okay? If you're working alongside people and they're punchy, they are generally speaking a liability. Mm. I want somebody to cover my back. Yeah. And when I am faced with violence and I'm in a position of danger, then I want to know that my colleagues are going to be there to help protect, support me, and well, help so. us get the job done. Mm. But generally speaking, you will find the overwhelming majority of cops want to swerve punchy police officers because they're, they're grief, they're aggravation. Mm. But they're not all stuck together then? Well, this, this cuts into something that's very much a story of the moment with regards to policing, of course, because there are inquiries going in into the standards and culture of the police. And we know through far too many revolting examples of late that the police are falling way, way short of the levels we expect of them, that we should deserve from them. Because when you get a warrant card and you sign on and you swear your oath, to become a police officer, it is only right that we, the public, expect them to operate by higher standards than us three round this table up. Yeah, because we're not in the old bill, right? That doesn't mean to say we can go off and behave like ourselves, but, you know, police officers, they have a very, very important power bestowed to them, and that is to deny people their liberty. Mm. You know, there is not many greater powers you can give to anyone. So when you give police officers that power and they sign on the dotted line, it is only right that we should expect their behaviour to be above and beyond 100%. what it is pretty much anywhere else. Well, basically, I've got a police officer that I get on with really well and they said it's on the computer as a nuisance, calls a nuisance to me, basically. Like it's on, when she puts in my name and you can only press in it. Like if you press in it, then it will flag up somewhere that... that police officer has logged on that so they said i can't go any further with that but it's on their nuisance nuisance marker is called dan in any any car okay uh, that they think that you are going to be a passenger <laughs> in right they will be go on, they will go on to the pnc and it will have what they call markers on mm. it yeah and it might have weapons it might have violence it might have whatever you know. and then of course it will be on ampr mm. So I've seen you talking about a previous example when you pulled off a roundabout. Of course it did, because you were on a main drag, pinged on APR, yeah. markers come up, violence, assaults police. No, so any time anytime you get pulled over in a car, the cop is already like got half one there because he thinks there might be one coming back. Yeah, of course. But apparently it's, obviously this is from the police officer, but um, it's a really high up police officer and he's got a really big bee in his bonnet with me. Like, I don't understand how, how you can have a personal... Thing. Comes back to what we were saying about Joey Pyle, wasn't it? Mm. Right? And that's your problem, that if you've got to a senior police officer who says, this is a man that we simply have to make an example of by taking him down, then 
that is that is going to be very challenging but for you. But the only thing they're going to get is a disc or driving or something silly. Like, it just don't make no... For example, the other day, I've come along the road and I've done the video. Yeah? Put my hand on the steering wheel, done a video, yeah? Yeah. Winding them up, as we said before. Got to the roundabout. Obviously, I knew he was on the main motorway. As we come off the motorway, what happened? Six police cars were waiting. As we went round the roundabout, they were all... Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're really going to use all them resources, all that money for a disc while driving. Do you know the maximum sentence is six months to three? Mm. <laughs> and I'd plead guilty and I'd get six weeks to three. Twelve weeks to six, sorry. When does it come out of your mind then that, fuck it, I'm not going to do that anymore? What, wind them up? Yeah. Oh, I'm always going to wind them up. Do you see that as an issue then? Yeah. Well, it doesn't help. Does it? <laughs> <laughs> right? Let's be perfectly frank. I've just wasted an hour of my life by trying to talk some sense into him and all he, all he said, yeah, I'm always going to wind him up. Yeah, well, well, then in that case, Dan, you're on your own, mate. Yeah. I, but at least I tried. Who wins in the end? At least I tried. Who wins in the end? Who wins in the end, Peter? It won't be Dan. What do you think the worst case scenario yeah, But I don't do be? anything. It truly won't be Dan. But I don't right. do anything. I don't you know, commit crimes. The establishment cannot allow Dan to end up being a winner. Right? But, but I don't do any. I don't commit crime. So what can no. they nick me for? Well, this whole driving's a crime. Yeah, all right. But I don't actually drive. Yeah. I don't actually. I actually pay a driver yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Good. They, they actually... Good. What, what are they going to nick me for? I don't sell drugs. I don't do arm robberies no more. I don't rob people no more. What? There's nothing they can actually physically come and, like you said, I revert, I revert to what I said earlier, mm. Dan, right? They'll be pouring over your social media talking about, you, oh, know, when you mug somebody way. off for this watch or that watch or the other watch, Tax right? You know, 100K in Bitcoin, blah, 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 blah. I bet as we speak, in fact, if you listen now, yeah, those sirens, yeah, <laughs> it's half a dozen police cars tearing off down to Bournemouth to find a bloke you mugged <laughs> off, right, and get a statement from him. You know, they'll, they will find something. And then, of course, the problem will be is if they get you for a crime of dishonesty, then, of course, the Proceeds of Crime Act comes into it. Mm. And then the entire emphasis is on you to prove that everything you've you are, got yeah. is legit. legit yeah. It's not like when you get nicked for a, you know, a crime, a crime where, innocence. of course, yeah, innocent until proven guilty. With the Proceeds of Crime Act, you have to that prove. is completely flipped, uh, yeah, and they will regard everything you own including that hoodie on your back and those <laughs> trainers on your feet as being the proceeds of crime and you mm. will have to prove otherwise mm. and that of course will be aligned to what i've said earlier about a tax investigation from the tax authorities so one way or another you know they could make life particularly uncomfortable for you and I have to say, if you continue I'm to antagonise, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, if you continue to antagonise, there will only be one winner, and it won't be Danny Sims, mm. won't be you, mate. Uh, why do you keep doing it then? If you just, I just high honestly, up coppers, just telling I you that you're never going to win, it's going to, it's going to come ahead, basically. I just think it's fun. Like they do the same to me. They drive past me and wave and take the piss or put the middle finger up. Like, so I just do the same to them. Do you know what I mean? Like. Danny Simpson from 1525, a police officer drove past me and waved. I will chase him down the road. If he stopped at a red, I'll drag him out of the window and beat him up. Like now, all right, cool. I'll go do that video and put you on social media. Let me tell you, Dan, you are very, very fortunate <laughs> that this is not the 1970s. Oh, no, I wouldn't you know. be alive by that. Because <laughs> you know what would have happened to you, I'm right? Sure. <laughs> Certain unscrupulous detectives, right, would have... Once you've got in a car, they would have given you a happy bag. What's that when they ran you right. off the road? No, no, a happy bag, right? Okay. It was the it was kind of like the slang that was used by people who would unscrupulously fit people up. And in that happy bag, which would have been found behind your seat or at your feet in the car, according to the evidence, in that hold all would have been DNA. A stocking. Right, mm -hmm. ready for you to pull over your head. Right, I'm talking old school, yeah, yeah, 70s yeah. and 80s, as opposed to a belly now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, gloves, a sawn off, maybe a crowbar. Yeah, you'd have been fitted up like Puck, a kipper, yeah. and you'd have got a 20, 25, 30 wrap round you. That's how they'd have sorted you out in the 70s. Puck, yeah. Is there a possibility that something like that could still happen? 
I would like to think not. Because I, nobody it, would believe Danny then. He's not that, that leg to stand on, has he? I would very no, much I like to think not. I I don't, I don't mm -hmm. you know, there are, of course, a lot of challenges in policing that need to be addressed, but mm -hmm. I would very much like to think there is no unscrupulous, dying, lying, perjuring bastard that would go and plant a happy bag on someone these days. I think that is a sin of our fathers, which will not be repeated, I sincerely hope. Mm -hmm. But it could be a possibility. If like, the beatings and that, he's not got a leg. If six people go and beat him up, he says they just attacked him. Yeah, but There's it's, no it's chance the, of winning. It's it? the age of body worn video, right? It's body worn video these days. You know, Is the body these, cams on? All yeah. these cops. So they like also lied. They said that there was these weapons next to my bed. Um, so 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 when they put the report in, so so was like, all right, we want we want the, the body worn. Like you're saying, this is there. We want the body worn. Then police have come back today saying, look, we can't give you the body worn because of uh, bad the assault is on Simpson. So they've got it. Do you know what I mean? And obviously, when I get this bar, I'm not going for a solicitor's firm. I'm going straight to a barrister, empowering a barrister. So when it goes to court, obviously all of evidence has to come. And have you ever we'll have another podcast? Uh, <laughs> have you ever thought about moving away though? Do you think that about? A wise move is to move out of the situation. A move, 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 move away from, from his kids. Yeah, I wouldn't move away from my kids. No, but anything on earth, just no. for a more stable life. With I have actually them. moved boroughs, so obviously you go from Met to Kent, blah blah. But I'm just getting the same with Kent. Like honestly, like police outside my house all the fucking time, driving past, pulling over, writing down number plates of car. A police officer come to my house the other week when it was really hot, the sunny time. And one of my company vans just magically set on fire. He pulled up at my address. Your van's on fire. Do you want to go and check it? He said, it's, it's here. I said, all right, sweet. He had the number plate of my cars that was on my drive written on his hand. So when he'd pulled up to tell me the van, my van's on fire, he'd written down the number plates of my, van, my cars. Perfectly decent bit of policing. Nothing wrong with that at all. That's of course they're doing it. Of course they're doing it. You're a persistent disqualified driver. Oh, I don't so of drive. course, if, you know, if, you would say if, if if you had local beat bobbies, you know, and let's hope they do bring them back. Neighbour of policing. Let's hope that does get brought back across the nation. The, the local neighbour of cop would go right. We've got a persistent disqualified driver here. Every morning on his on his beat. He will write down the car, the, the number plate of every car that's on his drive or outside his house or down the street. No, no, it's called trying to detect and prevent crime. Oh. And let me tell you why I prevent it, right? And this is no old spot here, right, Dan? Yeah. Okay. Reasons why I particularly disliked disqualified drivers, right, when I was in the old bill, and many, many cops do, right? You're uninsured. You've got no license. You're disqual, right? Now, you imagine how you would feel if a disqual driver with no insurance and no driving license hit one of your kids, mm. right? Injured them severely so that they would need constant medical care for the rest of their lives. But because that disqual driver was not insured, okay, you couldn't get the sufficient funds from his insurer to ensure that your sadly, badly injured child could get the 24-hour care they need. How would you feel? I don't know because I am insured. <laughs> you can't if you're a disqual. No, you I, be I am. I've got fully full traders insurance from my company. If you're if you're behind the wheel, I've and you're got a disqual, insurance. I promise your, you, your insurance is invalid. No, I've it's got utterly I've invalid got insurance. You cannot. I promise you. If you I've get behind the wheel, you. if you get behind the wheel, yeah. right, and you drive, any insurance you have is invalid. But if I've, you got are a disqualified but I've got insurance. I've got insurance. I pay three hundred and eighty pound a month. Believe you me, you are. <laughs> not insured if you drive as a disqualified driver. You are not I've got insured. Insurance. I've, been, I've had right? it the last two and a half years. Police have even rung them up and told them, how has he got, have you insured him? He hasn't got a license. They haven't fully insured me. There's me on it and there's three other people like, who drive my company vans. I've got full traders insurance. Have you got a license? No. And I told them I didn't have a license. How can, can they drive without a license? As far as I'm concerned, no, no. I mean, traffic wasn't my bag, but I'm. I could easily, I could I'm easily go around it. That mm -hmm. any, if you if you haven't got a driving license, you, you're not insured. End of story. Did but you ever see story. any crashes with people? End of story. Drunk or without licenses and oh, causing harm. Drink drivers, of course. Yeah, I wasn't in, <laughs> wasn't in uniform very often, but 
in the three or so years that I was in uniform, yeah, of course. What yeah, sort of, what's drivers. the worst thing you ever seen as a police officer? Well, I didn't like the sight of blood, funnily enough, right? Never did, and, and, and still don't. I don't think um, anyone does. So, uh, no, but there were some people, and, and I have to say, they have my respect. Some of these traffic cops that literally have to kind of scrape bodies off the road have, have my respect. That is something that I quite simply couldn't do. They're the ones that are harassing me. Well, I couldn't, well, I couldn't <laughs> do it. Traffic coppers. Yeah. But I, I did go to one particularly unpleasant accident, and there were people severely injured in the back. But my colleague, knowing that I'm not great at the sight of blood, you know, said to you, right, sort the traffic out. So I went and sorted the traffic out and made sure that a bad situation didn't get worse while he and others got on with the injured parties. Jesus. Obviously, you're very anti-authority with the beatings and stuff. You're, you're fucking your worst own enemy sometimes, but if it was a decent copper, would you give them the respect that they deserved? Somebody that's just saying, look, Dan, you're doing this, like, or would you just think, fuck him as well? So like I did, like the other day when obviously I said that we got pulled over, the police officers trying to instigate me to do something and I dropped off. When I got grabbed around the corner and there was about four cars of them, he said, stop. I stopped. I walked straight back to him. He was really sweet. And then he had his mate, who was a bit jacked up and wanted to have a tear up. He's grabbing me. I'm like, you're not making sense. You're sweet and he's not. But then they was really polite, respectful, and then just let me on my way after. Has it got that good cop, bad cop mentality sometimes where that's the part they play? That's a trick as old as police in itself, isn't it? You know? I don't even do interviews no more. I literally refuse to be interviewed. Or if I go in there, I just literally say I want a, a legal advice every 10 seconds. Yeah, of course they are. You, you are perfectly <laughs> entitled to that. Yeah. yeah, you're entitled to legal representation and you are perfectly entitled to remain silent during an interview. But after about the fourth one, they go, no, we ain't, we ain't giving you no more legal advice. And I say, I'm not having an interview. And I, you're not. And I just bang the alarm. Put back to myself. I literally am the biggest shit for them. <laughs> they must think for the fuck. We're glad we use a lot. Thank you for beating him up. <laughs> Would Danny have markers in his name all around the UK, yeah, no matter right. where he moved Yeah, it'll be on the police national computer. Everywhere. Yeah, yeah so wherever you go, it's, an, it's a national computer database. So that, a, how yeah. long would it take to, if you started making off. changes, just to... Question them beyond my pay grade. Would that just be there for fucking eternity? Really don't know. Yeah. Is that then difficult then if you're constantly getting harassed? And when, where do you, like you say, he's antagonising as well. So it's it's like cat and mouse in it. They're both. But like Peter's saying, there's only going to be one outcome. Yeah, but do you know what they do now? They, um, so my bank card and, and the SOS, they try and follow it to, and get the cameras of. So basically, long story short, I've grassed it up. I don't care. I know the man in the petrol garage really well. I go there all the time, every morning. All of a sudden, he told me the other day, when I left and I paid on my cars, the police turned straight up and asked the CCTV to see if I was driving the car. Of course. <laughs> of course they will. But that's just like, that's an harassment. Of course they will. But how mad is that? Like, you're checking because I paid on my car, so you've flown straight there to see if I was driving. But I want to get you. But so what are you going to get? Six weeks do free. I will be out in three weeks on tag. Like, it's a... I'm not even dry. I'm not even dry. You'll be out in six weeks. If you get, if you get six weeks. 12 weeks, weeks do six do, yeah. and then you get yeah. the tag. So you're out in three weeks. So right. I would literally do three weeks behind the door. But did you not do a sentence there for driving? Uh -huh. Did you not do another sentence just a few months ago for driving? Oh, it was last year, last November, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm. But did, did the sentences not get bigger though? No. Again, maximum. the sentencing is a matter for the courts, not. Mm -hmm. not maximum really sentence six months to three. <laughs> Unless I drove. If you drive off from the police. Mm -hmm. It's dangerous driving, that's two years. But if I was driving, I'll put my hand straight up there and then six weeks, through, six months through three, give me quickly. Are you happy to do the sentence just to get try and get one up and then? No, I don't drive now. I pay a man £100, £150 a day. Like I've got an Uber man. He comes, I insure him in my car and he just drives me around. Mm -hmm. He's and a with terrible the, driver. But right. He drives with, me. with the money you've got, right, mm -hmm. and your love of driving, mm -hmm. okay, you don't live a million miles from Brands Hatch. No. no right? No. So... Why don't you strike up a relationship with one of the many, many teams that operate out there? Because there's, you know, so many different driving levels from mm. Formula Ford to, you know, saloon car driving and all that kind of stuff. All these kind of people that want some sort of sponsorship. Why don't you strike a deal? It's local, yeah. right? With one of those teams who would appreciate a bit of sponsorship. And then in return, you can go down there and thrash it to your heart's content. Mm. 
Right, and then there is no need to I feel the I, urge I, I to jump behind don't. a wheel. I, I pay someone now to drive. Like I've got yeah. an Uber man and I've got another geezer and I just pay him. When I need a driver, I pay him. Like my mate, he's got someone. Pay £15 an hour. Like I went to Manchester the other day, went in my car with a driver, happy. Come back 24 hours later, the man, I give him my, the driver £100. Now that's £100. Now I've not got to sit on that motorway looking in my rear view mirror at every car. I've Every slip on, I've not got to look in my mirror to see if there's a fucking fire service sitting there. Get on a train, <laughs> right? Get it's better for the environment, right? <laughs> okay, it's got a cozy on there. To some, yeah, um, no, no. To like it. It's, 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 it's got a toilet on there, right? Yeah. Have a buffet car, so you can go and get yourself a sandwich, you know, and all that stuff. Go by a train, much better for the environment. I, 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 I drive hardly ever these days because I'm, I'm not a fan of driving anymore. Anyways. I just love cars, though. But yeah. But now I pay someone to drive me. So I honestly, I don't see it as a problem. Do you know what I mean? Like, I have no intentions of driving. I don't drive. I have nice cars. I have insurance. If James was to drive my car, I would just go, What's your, show me your driving license, send a picture to my insurance, stay insured within an hour. Let's go. So, yeah. What do you think you've robbed, Danny, over the last five years of people? Fucking hell. A lot. I've got one in the pipeline for a meal, so... I'll be on other numbers. Do you think with those sort of numbers <laughs> so that then, anybody's <laughs> ever going to come forward though? And I know you've got that. Well, doing nothing. we had the first podcast? Two and a half, year and a half, two years ago. Oh, so was it, and no one's done anything. Has there been any hits? No, any hits. You always hear through the grapevine, this fella's going to do that, this fella's going to do that. But we live in a different world. As you said, years ago, you would have been fitted up with a bag. Years ago, you robbed these people, they would put a hit on you, you would have someone at your door in the bush, whatever, going to kill you. We live in a different world now. If I went down the road and threw an egg at a house, I guarantee you by the time I got to the end of the road, I'd been hit. You can't commit crime now. They're on all phones, they're on everything. Like, There's no assassins no more. Like, So no, I don't feel like I'm going to be killed. Well, there are. But some of them, you know, sadly, tragically, are 15, 16, Mm. and they got a blade in their hands you know and there are also kids out there yep, which yep. is how the whole hierarchy of criminality has changed so much in my life that's why i don't wear a watch no more yeah yeah exactly i don't yeah. every time i've been here every podcast 50 grand 60 grand underground watches apple watch thanks why london it's, you can't well am i going to get stabbed up for example your watch 11 grand 12 grand you're going to get stabbed up for it no you're going to hand it straight over mm -hmm. But what if he thinks that any movement you've done was wrong and he stabs you? Is it worth it? Is it worth 12 grand? No. Nah. Is it worth to look a bit flash? It's not. I'm not risking it at all. For someone who robs watches. For, this is what I say to people. When like a girl the other day said about a watch, I was like, it's honestly not worth it. It's honestly not worth it. I am a robber and I'm telling you by no means necessary. Do not have a watch. No, it's not worth it. These 15 year old kids are seeing 50, 10, 20 grands for watches. They're going to stab you up. Like, there's no ifs. They come from nothing. And they can stab you now and go and sell that watch then. It's not, no, no, thank you. Not for me. Do you think Dan will live past 40? That's largely my concern. <laughs> um, right? Yeah. You know, um, that he doesn't, I should say. Right? He that, that he doesn't live past 40. Um, you know, if he's on their radar, which he clearly is, um, I imagine the uh, intense attention that he's often subjected to is not going to subside anytime soon. And saying on this podcast that I've got a bit of graft in the pipeline that's going to draw me a mill, right, is probably only going to ensure that that attention continues. If I was a detective and somebody said to me, I know I'm mixing the old world with the new now, but somebody said to me, right, for the next hour, I want you to sit in front of, front of this and watch this bloke um, and use that as a start point for plotting some form of detective investigation, not uniform mm. cops, but, you know, detective suitably, suitably resourced investigation and we will make the money and resources available. I'd go, okay. And, and I would think about it and I would do all the things that I've mentioned about the surveillance, technical and traditional, and think about, you know, a, a proceeds of crime down the line if we nick you for a crime of dishonesty or if, you know, involving the uh, the tax authorities. And I'd go, well, 
are you going to write me off for six months or a year to do a proper, proper job on this fella and make sure that he goes behind the door for a long, long time and we skint him? And if they say, yes, Peter, I go, okay, right, let's do it. But don't it have to go to a judge? No. Don't it? No. Oh, I thought, like, to bug phones and that, you had to go to a judge and get judge permission. Not yet, we don't, oh. in this country. Not yet, we don't. Suitable authorities can be granted by senior police officers. Oh, sick. So see with you sitting on these podcasts look with Dan and stuff would anybody He's ever trying to get bugged. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would anybody ever come forward to you and say what was it like? Let, 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 is see, it listen, is a it lot joy? of the stuff that Dan says is, is for people's here say as well. Let us all smoke mirrors as well. Try to cover your ass, Dan. But <laughs> it's uh, would anybody ever come forward to you and say what was it like or ask for information? Well, we'll find out after this. <laughs> oh that. no, I was gonna say like, I'm we'll not find out. that known, but uh -huh. we'll, we'll find out, and I'm sure many people will, He's will, will say I'm, I'm the fucker that's we'll on say, it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it, if as we get out of here, right, as we leave, I shake your hand, right, yeah, <laughs> then and I put my me. hand in the pocket, yeah. right, and I've got it's a, a wipe in there, you know I'm getting your DNA. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. oh, what advice would you have for Dan? Seriously, though, Peter, go like, straight. Is... In the story, go straight, right? He's got oh, talent, please. he's got charm, he's got personality, he's got contacts, and he's got a couple of quid behind him. Go bloody straight. Well, that was told straight, really, wasn't it? <laughs> How does it feel being sitting across from like Peter? I know you're anti for it, but Peter's a sound no, he's guy, a really man. Nice man, like, yeah. obviously. Like, he has been trying to give you I advice. I always treat as I be treated, as my dad showed me, and literally, he's been nothing but polite, respectful. Like I couldn't fault him. Do you know what I mean? Like regardless of his job or whatever, it's just not, not my business. He's paid for his life. He's paid for his family. He's looked after his family. Like his job title don't mean anything. It's how you treat people that when I'm different. If a police officer come over to me, pulled me over and was nice, like, oh, just wanted to check you weren't driving, Dan. No problem, have a good day, officer. And I actually said it to officers the other day. I went, do you know what? I know I'm a cunt to use. I know I take the piss on social media. I know I do that. But at the end of the day, you do do our jobs and you do put your life on the line every day. So do you know what? I have got a bit of respect for you. The ones I don't like are the liars that will ring up social services and lie, that will be in an interview and say, Mr. Simpson hit me. No, I didn't. Like, tell the truth what happened. You grabbed me. You bent me up. I didn't resist. And you're just saying I resisted. You're lying. Don't lie. Don't try and make something up. They're the police officers I can't stand. You would have seen it, Peter, a lot of corrupt coppers. So you can understand why people are against them as well when they're not fully 100% with their job and behind the badge. Do you know what I mean? Like, can you understand where the hate comes from as well from some people? Yeah, of course. You know, there are certain people that will always hate the police, no matter what. And there's a, a silent minority who are actually very pro-police, although that silent majority has been very much affected by all the countless dreadful stories that have been coming out about the police recently. Literally. Absolutely appalling stories. And there are inquiries going on. There's a number of investigations going on. And the police have clearly got a problem in certain departments yeah, the in certain areas hard, about absolutely. their culture their standards what is acceptable and what's not and how to clamp down on it Literally. um and i've got some pretty strong thoughts on it as you can imagine you know the police needs to get a grip i've already spoken about how we should demand a higher level of behavior from them stamping out a perverse culture is really not a difficult thing to do because police are disciplined organisations and they have a hierarchy. You know, you go from either a chief constable or a commissioner down through all the ranks, then to eventually to an inspector, sergeant, and then your, your PCs or your DCs, right? It is real. So chief constables and the commissioner of the Met actually can really affect the culture of an organisation, even if the people working for that organisation never get to meet that man or woman. They really can have an effect on the culture. And for me, policing's all just about, and it builds a lot on what you've said, Dan, just do the right thing. Literally. How difficult is it to do the right thing? You're a police officer. You know what the right thing is. <laughs> you know that racism, misogyny, homophobia police brutality, verbaling people, having no integrity, has no place whatsoever in the police service. It's really easy. So there's the door. Now piss off. Literally. All part of my language, right? You know what I mean? Mm. It's so easy. Do the right thing in everything you do. 
Do the right thing. That doesn't mean to say you have to be a robot. It doesn't mean to say you can't go home and dance and drink and party yeah. and have fun and tell jokes and have a personality. You can bring your personality to work. Mm. But of course, as long as that personality is that of a person who's got integrity, will always challenge people that do the wrong thing, that will whistleblow upon people that do the wrong thing so the policing can get rid of them. 100%. Like and I've also got... have clean boots, put a comb through your hair and look presentable. I know it's difficult in a stab fest and hive is. I know that's very difficult. But, you know, do your best. Come on. 100%. Like when I got arrested the other day and I was in hospital and they broke my ribs, my head and all that, standing there, kicking the bed so I couldn't go to sleep, burping, blowing it in my face. <laughs> like, honestly, like that's not... However, am I ever going to have respect for that? When I got to the police station, when I got in the van from the hospital, uh, he said, whatever name they are, TSG or whatever, he said it, he said, welcome to TSG, bang, slam the door shut. So I thought, right, no problem. When we got to the police station, I said, I looked at him, I went, you got something to say? And he went, what do you mean? I went, well, you said something when you shut the door, so have you got something to say? No, I ain't got nothing to say. But hang on, you said something, now it's all recorded. So repeat it, what you said. He didn't want to repeat it. Long story short, they grabbed me, they went taken to his cell. Grab, I'm already in handcuffs. Dragging me. As they're dragging me, police officer opened the door. What do they do? Try to ram me into the door. But there's a police officer now in the door. What's the door do? Smack the other police officer in the face. I'm laughing. I'm like, it's all on camera, mate. Now, I couldn't possibly <laughs> comment on something that may be the subject of an ongoing investigation. Mm. You know, I make no apologies for repeating that. <laughs> but, what I, but what I will say is that TSG, Territorial Support right. Group, has a nickname amongst certain police officers. And it's that TSG stands for Thick and Stupid Group. Literally. Not Territorial Support Group. But uh, what I don't understand in that situation, I I am who I am, I do what I do. But you've now come to arrest me for that, which I've got NFA for. You've now done that to me. I'm going to remember every face. And as you say, Blue Water, Lakeside, whatever. What Now when they're walking with their kids in Blue Water, I'm not going to have that. Regardless of my kids, I'm going to run over and fly kick them. Like... And then what? I go to prison. But hang on a minute, you've done this to me. It's just a non-spiral. So it's a vicious circle. But like Peter's saying, the only outcome, the only winner's going to be is the coppers, yeah. eventually. Yeah. And you're willing to just keep doing what yeah, you're doing. Yeah, 100%. Until... Well, if I see any of them coppers walking down the road with their kids, I will, uh, obviously it's a podcast, I don't really want to go too much into it. Mm -hmm. But there will be violence. And in that situation, there and then, when I see them, I will win there and then. They will not win. They've done that to me. They won at the moment. They're one nil up. But there was 15, 20 of them that I remember their faces. And it's a small world. Do you know what I mean? What's then, your prediction for Danny? <laughs> Won't be a by 40. It's, <laughs> it, it's, it's not a prediction. It's a plea. Mm. It's a real plea because you know, James, you've met him a number of occasions and I've only met Danny today. There is a large part of Danny that you just can't help but like. <laughs> <That's> right? <laughs> exactly. Okay? You know? So, so it's a plea. Just go straight. Mm -hmm. You know, just bin it all off. Be a straight runner. There is no shame in being a straight runner who provides and no, loves love, his family. I love being straight. I there love is going no to shame in that. No, honestly, right? I do. It's what actually, in my eyes, makes a proper man. Mm. Okay? Be a straight runner. Provide for your family. Love them to the ends of the earth every day. Mm. It's like back to what you said about the best month, the best pound yeah. is the pound you grafted for. Yeah. And I, I love it. Like... Like we said before, telling kids to get go straight, go to school, get a good job and all that. That's what I love, like going to work, providing for my kids. Like When I pay my boys their wages, all the people that work for my company, I have my kids there. And when I go bang, 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 is your money, your wages, your wages, I go to my kids. Do you know what I mean? That on a Friday is the best. I might be broke from Friday to Monday, <laughs> but... Doing the wages, mate, knowing that they're going to pay for their family, their kids and all that, and then my little kids there, they give them their little wages. Like, that's the best thing. Then, as you said before, as we said before, going to do a crime, going to do a robbery, going to do this, because you've got to look over your shoulder every 10 seconds. I'm deeply envious. I think it must be wonderful to be able to employ people and mm. help them support their families and all that. I'm deeply envious on that front. But there you go. You've got a talent for doing that. Use it, yeah. right? Don't worry. And then you'd be surprised how quickly the old bill will melt away. Mm. You know, once you get yourself... It's been 32 years. Once, <laughs> once you get yourself, you know, off of that 
off of that hit list. It's not a hit list. But of course, what, it's not. But you know what I mean? Once you get yourself off their radar and you become yesterday's news, there'll be somebody else to fill the gap. But I honestly feel like since I've changed it up, now robbing the bad guys on that, yeah, they've been on me more than they ever was when I was doing armed robberies. Like, and because of what? My lifestyle. Because I'm driving down the road in a nice car. Because, but it, it's, it's irrelevant. It's, it's, it's bad people's money. Does that make sense? And you're on me now. When I used to do armed robberies, I used to literally just see a car drive past, all of a sudden, he's got a book in his thing, the observation team. That's all I used to see. Now, it's getting pulled over every day, every day. Baby mum's ringing me, just got pulled over four police cars. This, that, so service. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, And I'm not doing anything. Me robbing a drug dealer or taking a watch off a, off a bad guy, I don't go there physically arm rob them. I call on a deal and I just blag them. Do you know what I mean? Just a blag. And now the police are on me more for that than anything. But bearing in mind, it's not, it's not a crime because they're not going to report it. They're not a straight person like James. They're a bad person. So they're not going to go to the police and go, Danny Simpson robbed my watch. How did you get the watch? Uh, uh, sold drugs for the last 20 years. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> they can't. So... Why are they on me now so much? Do you know what I mean? And the thing is, for, for no reason. It's mad. Do you think Danny brings a lot of it on himself? Well, he's admitted to antagonising. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know, You've not been listening, James. <laughs> <laughs> he only has himself to blame in that regard, doesn't he? Literally. But can, that is a crime, though, isn't it? No matter what, if you're planning to meet someone and taking whatever they've got off them you know to offend someone to antagonize someone it's not necessarily a crime right but um i'm afraid dan's got himself on their radar and it's going to take quite a bit of effort to uh to get off it but he can he can do it it's all in it's entirely in dan's hands well i'm taking entirely steps in Dan's i mean hands. i'm not driving i'm not doing them things you know what i mean because yeah. i I'll be honest, I have. And at the end of the day, like you said, you pop up on a blinker. But I don't pop up on a blinker if I change my number plates. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So there's ways and ways around it. I don't do any of it no more. You see, pay this person and I don't have to change plates, pay £60 for a pair of plates. All of a sudden, oh, I think I went past a speed camera. Oh, let me change the plates again. I ain't got to do that. Just pay him to drive me. I haven't got to look in the mirror. I haven't got to do anything. There you, know you go. You there seem you a bit go. deflated now, Peter. I, I think you come in here with good intentions, hoping to plant a few seeds I'm in Danny's I, mind. I'm not deflated <laughs> in the slightest, right? You can only lead a horse to water. You yeah. can't make you it, can't drink it. Make <laughs> it drink. And I've, so in that regards, my conscience is clear. I've done my then bit. Then I don't commit a crime, and that's the main thing. Do you know what I mean? And if I bump into you in blue water, we're going to have a coffee. Yeah? <laughs> right? Before oh, me. Yeah, before... <laughs> well, on the... hang on. <laughs> hang on. Proceeds of crime. <laughs> <laughs> I better get me home, Dan. <laughs> before we finish up, Peter Lapp, any words of advice for Dan? Yeah, I, 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 again. I think I've said it many times, many, many times. And um, it's been a joy meeting him. It really has, you know. You got talent, use it, go straight. You think so? I was a good-looking fella. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for, any, for anybody that's watching, Danny Boy, like, for anybody that's maybe want to get involved in a life of crime, you've been in and out your whole life. But what advice would you have for them? It's not worth it, honestly. As we said, prison is just a waste of time. And as Peter said, literally, it goes like that, like your life. So it's honestly, it's honestly not worth it. One day in the real world. It's not worth fucking anything else. Like literally be there for your family, your kids, everyone. Cause that place, that four by four cell, when you're on your own, you're literally with no one, nothing. All your friends that you think are your mates and they're there for you. Second you're in there and they shut that door, your mates ain't picking up the phone. Yeah. So honestly, it's <clears throat> not worth it. So you can understand that, but even though when you're talking, there's some bits, not playing the victim, but there's some bits you think just fucking stop that and then, it would, like you say, the coppers would melt off, but maybe you'll watch back one day and go, do you know what? Fucking hell, that. Yeah. But right now, you've still got that. I can see you're trying to change. I believe you will make changes, but there's still that bit of there where there's a, still hatred towards someone who's hitting you, beating you up, but it's both sides, isn't it? It's both sides of, to blame when it comes to trying to change, but something you need to then take full control and go, do you know what? Fuck it. Not saying they've won, but just for your own life, to better your own life is just... Dealing with it and try to 
it's not how do you then if you've got anti authority and trying it's not as if you want to let them win but it's a case of you need to stop before you need to grow one yeah grow you're a lot you're a long special. time dead don't waste this short and precious life just yeah, don't, waste mm -hmm. don't waste it don't waste lads listen thoroughly enjoyed that conversation Thank today you. a couple Cheers, of good James. guys man danny yeah. and pete listen <laughs> <laughs> take care